Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mokalover, and thank you for joining me here today. So we are starting a new campaign, and of course, in Kaiserreich. And as you can tell by the, th the thumbnail, as well as by the title, we are going to go ahead and play as the good old nation of the kingdom of the Ukraine. Now, um, just like I do with the beginning of every campaign, we'll take a look at any major nation buffs, or rules, or... Pretty much everything's... I'm basically just going to tell you that everything's the same. Actually, wait a second. Country paths? Oh! Oh. Ausgleich? Reform? Success? Um, I'm going to make a quick uh, change here. I want to see something like this happen. Oh, Alright, cool, cool. Save. Preset. Uh, no thanks you. No thank you. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's start it anyways. Cool, I totally forgot about that. But anyways, we're playing as the Kingdom of the Ukraine right now. So, Kaiserreich Alpha 0.9.3. Uh, in the future, this, of course, will be outdated, but whatever. Also, I do want to let you know, I'm using several of the music mods for uh, Kaiserreich, as well as the graphical overhaul mod, which makes it look a little bit different than normal Kaiserreich. But anyways, let us begin, and I'm going to have quite a lot of text to read very, very soon. But... The Ukraine. It's a very interesting country to play as. Not necessarily easy, though. So, this is how I'm going to start playing the Ukraine. I'm not going to focus at all on horses. I really don't care. I'll keep the motorized, but basically, we don't have a lot of divisions. Oh, we have some divisions, but they're very, very understaffed. So, that's a huge problem for us. Um, yeah, just, they're understaffed. We don't have almost any manpower. Our stability right now is okay. War support sucks. We have, of course, Russia who wants to bully us. We are currently in the Reich's Pact. So, that'll be interesting to see what happens. And, of course, Third International. Pretty much your standard Kaiserreich stuff. But we, as a Ukraine, we have a mission. A mission from God, some would say. In order for us to be successful. And also, I'm going to get rid of these tanks. I'm not even going to use them. They're pointless. Actually, I might not even use the motorized then. Um, I'll switch the motorized out eventually. I'm not going to use tanks. I need guns. I need a lot of guns. I need a lot of artillery. And I'm going to need some support equipment. So, some of you might be wondering already, how long is this campaign going to be? That's a very good question. And just like the beginning of every single campaign I do, I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Um, where, uh, how far this campaign will go. We only have three research slots. Also, I did meet a friend yesterday. Or at least by the time this recording goes up, two days ago. And um, I had a good time with him. Thank you very much for coming over to my house, John. Please don't dox me. So, um, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much all you can really do. We have a very small navy. It's not great by any means, but it's not exactly terrible either. We have a lot of capital ships, surprisingly. Select that. Select you in half. There you go. Not very good composition for screens, but oh well. Cool, we got some subs. Uh, put you under a new guy. Put you guys over here under spotting chance, positioning. Um, enemy fleets. I'm going to give Andri to you for these fleets. And I'm going to give the subs the guy with better spotting chance. Because I'm going to use these to raid enemy fleets. So we have Svai... Toslav Shramchenko. Yes, I know Ukrainian very, very, obviously very, very fluently. Totally no problem with Ukrainian language at all. Totally not. Totally not. <laughs> oh, man. I wonder if this is going to uh, upset any sort of... If I have any Russian subs or not, but that's okay. Anyways, so there's really not much we can do right now. We get about 1.41 political power today because we cannot choose a national focus to begin because we have to wait for our future to begin. So, let's go ahead and read a bunch of text. Oh, we only have 25 factories. Our kingdom. And before I make sure... Yeah, that looks, that's pretty good for now. So, the kingdom of the Ukraine proclaimed its independence with German support on January 25th, 1918. A state of affairs that was quickly ratified by the Peace of Nations Agreement at Brest-Litovsk. An initial experiment with socialism in the form of a People's Republic was swiftly expunged by a German-backed coup. This operation, led by the strongman and former general in the Russian army, Pavlo Skoropadsky, set the tone for Ukraine's future. It was to be a breadbasket used by a military aristocrat elite from across Eastern Europe as a source of food, a convenient market for goods, and a military bulk 
bulwark against the weakened Russian Republic for a time. The dispute between Germany and its Austro-Hungarian ally over Ukrainian rumbled on after the Weltkrieg, eventually settling on a compromise where King Vasily, Vasily and Austrian Archduke-born Wilhelm Franz von Habsburg would rule with the support of Skoropadsky, who as a German allied hetman holds incredible powers of both civil and military affairs. By 1927 though, German involvement in the Austrian Ausgleich negotiation meant that Ukraine fell de facto into the hands of the hetman with King Vasily, Vasily, yeah, probably becoming an increasingly marginalized figure. Ukraine under the hetmanat has become the breadbasket of the Reichspakt and made its wealthy landowners exorbitantly wealthy, but at the expense of the Ukrainian peasantry. Almost now, 20 years after the Weltkrieg, the national situation is unstable to say the least. The Reich forces us to sell our goods almost exclusively to nations within its sphere of influence while syndicalists gain popularity amongst the downtrodden rural poor and city workers with each passing day. Both ethnic Russians and the pro-Russian uh, population dream of unification with our former master to the east, while Ukrainian nationalists proclaim that our kingdom is no more than a German puppet. This is an immutable truth. Despite these many issues afflicting us, our land is prosperous and fertile, our people industrious, and our potential boundless. Oh god, how do you say that? ne Vimerla Ukraina. Ukraina. And I get the Ukrainian government. It is fair to say that our government is divided, while Pavel Skoropatsky does his best to solve the antagonism between the army consisting of former officers of the Russian Imperial Army and the civil administration, most of which actively supports our current position in the Reich's Pact. Many of Ukraine's problems can only be solved when the majority of our population, the Kulaks and peasants, have an opportunity to sell their substantial agricultural produce in Europe beyond the narrow confines of the Reich's Pact. We shouldn't provoke the peasants because they could come and backstab us. Oh no, the assassination of President Kerensky shot and killed while on the way to the Senate. Salient was taken down by the police, but the goals and the intentions of the attacker are unknown. Despite his massive unpopularity among the Russian people due to his botched land reforms and ineffective rule, Kerensky was nevertheless able to hold the country together for years, and his death has thrown Russia into chaos. The senators are already discussing a possible replacement to Kerensky. New coalitions are being formed, both between the left and the right, while military men like Denikin, Arangel, and Kornilov are just one step away from intervening to dissolve democracy and save Mother Russia. How barbaric. Truly barbaric. This is why we separated from those Russian folk. Romanov is now in charge. He's a Russian aristocrat, cousin of the last Russian Emperor Nicholas II. Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich. Easy to manipulate the Russian political scene. Mm, Alright, so they have Romanov. It didn't necessarily go the way here. I'm going to assume they're going to go with maybe a constitutional monarchy, maybe? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I really don't remember. I don't play Kaiserreich a ton just because it can be very, very laggy, especially in mid to late game. But we'll see how far we get. I do have to say, though, for our goals, I'm not going to read the Toilet Charter because that happens in every game, just like the assassination of President Kerensky, but oh well. Um, but... Our goal, while we don't have a definite goal of how much land we're going to take or who we're going to destroy, my goal is to liberate the Ukraine from the Reich's Pact, if we so choose to do so, and make it so that the Ukraine is at least a major power. It's a major power that can that holds weight in any global discussion. That is my goal. Uh, Edward VIII crowned as King of Britain. So that means if I have to leave the Reich's Pact, I will leave the Reich's Pact. If I have to kill off Russia, we will ki we will kill off Russia some way, somehow. I will find a way, because I've done it before as a Ukraine. Um, other than that, we might have to take out Germany, um, and I'm totally fine with that. But we'll definitely remain in the Reich's Pact for as long as is necessary. Now, um, yeah. If we take up the Don Kuban Union, we'll see what happens. I have played this before, and actually, I did. I was very successful at defeating the Russians. Actually, I actually had the Don Kuban Union in another game join the Reich's Pact, so that made it a little bit easier. Uh, oh no, Black Monday hits us, though. Almost two weeks ago, the Berlin Stock Exchange plunged into the abyss, throwing Germany's economy into an unprecedented crisis. Now that the crashes, shockwaves have reached the Ukraine, German and Austrian-owned companies have closed down or laid off their workers. The C Ukrainian Hrivna is losing value and resource exports are shrinking exponentially. So that really hurts us, but it'll go away 
when it goes away. So, Because I want to make as many guns as much as fast as possible. So, one thing I do want to know. We do have 52 political power. I could, could get, uh, where is it? Plus 0 0.03 political power a day. We could do that. Or, I could save it up and get to early mobilization and then partial mobilization as fast as possible. And then focus on increasing our conscription level. Because that's really the absolute most important thing. See gridlock in France. Hmm. Let's see. Who's going to get? Ooh, the White Guard. Belaya Gardia is a film based on the novel written by the leader of the pro-Russian movement, Mikhail Bugalkov. Bulgakov. The film story describes the life of one Russian family in Kiev just after the German occupation in 1918. The main characters are the Russian officers and the Ukrainian citizens that participated in the defense of Kiev from those disloyal to the new regime of the Ukrainian nationalists and different socialist groups comprised of soldiers and the army of Hetman Skoropatsky. The film analyzes the relations between the Russians and the Ukrainians, conceived by Bulgakov as a symbol of national reconciliation, the White Guard encourages the unity of the kingdom and the friendship of its people, though some radical groups of the local nationalists consider the film to be Russian propaganda. And it looks like they elected the Travailleurs in uh, France. Syndicalists, okay? Long live our people, united and free. I will click on that because that gives us more stability for the people. Or for the country. Oh, and so what? We have national spirits of Hetman's army, which hurts us, which really hurts us. Because we get less manpower, which really sucks. So we need to change that. And we have issue of the Russian language, less political power, and less stability. Well, I'll be honest with you, we're going to have issues with the Russian language for a very, very long time. Um, good. Black Monday, of course. So, we are right now authoritarian Democrat under Vasily the First. Vasily the First. And we're probably going to stay that way. I like authoritarian Democrat just because you have, I think, more options than maybe some other factions. I guess technically authoritarian Democrats would probably ally with paternal autocrats as well as national populists, but then we have syndicalists under Nikita Khrushchev. We have 1% of our population supporting, what is that, market liberals under Boris somebody. Okay, I just see it through here. We have some social Democrats under Vladimir Vinichenko, Restoration Democracy in Australasia. But other than that, we are just kind of waiting for things to collapse a little further. So, since we have time... Let's go ahead and start training some subs. I don't mind that at all. Right now, we are currently... Ooh, Death of Pius the 11th. You know what? Go ahead and make those ships. I really don't care. Everyone come to Sevastopol. Great place, right? Great place. Cool. So, I really... Like I said earlier, I really don't know that much Ukrainian. But I did look up on Google Translate how to poorly pronounce these words. Such as, hello, or I really... I typed in hi, and it says, privet. Privet? Privet. So, Privet to all of you. Hi. The other word, I want to look up how to pronounce Ukraine on Google Translate and pronounce it very, very poorly. And it said, it said you pronounce it as Ukraina. 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 I'm sorry if I offend your ears if you are a native Ukrainian speaker. Anyways, electronic mechanical engineering. Very nice. Hmm. Ukraina. That might be better. I don't know. I only speak mostly English. Anyways, so yeah, we're gonna play as Ukraine. And well, we already are playing as Ukraine. Kind of hanging out, having a good time. I'm not gonna train my soldiers yet, just because we need more guns. I'm gonna make sure we have a lot of artillery though, because that's gonna be very, very important. Very, very important. So I forgot to put on generals. Hmm, standard infantry guy. Not really too much around here. Thorough planet. This this guy could be good for a uh, field marshal. Out of supply, planning speed. We'll give you... Hin not? Nat? Nat? And for this guy, we can speed up time. Oh. Papal Enclave. St. Peter has a new occupant. Hmm. Dimitrio. Dimitro. Cool. And for the... Right now, I'll put under... Uh, it's actually... Let me see the details. So you're an organizer. Actually, I'm going to promote this guy. Andri... Melnik. Melnik. I don't know how to pronounce that. Something like that. I don't want to use pa Pavlo Skoropatsky, even though he's like our super cool guy. But you just get less leader experience gain, and I'm not about that life. No, no, no. But this guy, yeah, he's kind of new, but at least he doesn't lose army XP. Tibet joined the Great Khanate. Cavalry officer. Well, I already got rid of my cavalry, so that doesn't even matter. And now he can be a logistics 
wizard as well, which I like. Which we probably won't really suffer too much from logistical problems. Ow. But uh, anyways, I hit my hair. My I hit my hair. I hit my leg against my chair. Ooh. Mm, all stats. We only can pick one trait for now. If I have to use him, I'm probably going to use Logistics Wizard, but I'm going to wait and see what happens. I don't know exactly where I'm going to need all my soldiers. I'm going to assume we're going to guard against Russia. Go to Russia for now. Uh, I hope we see a Russian Civil War. I think that'd be a lot of fun. And actually, they kind of like us. Yeah, we, we kind of like each other for now. Even though they have negative 44 and a half stability. Holy cow. I thought, yeah, 54 is pretty good. Oh, oh we got enough political power. Thank God. Ooh. Let's go ahead. Oh, but we can change industrial concerns for more construction speed. But if I do this and go from early to go to early mobilization, we get more fuel per oil. We get more fuel gain per oil or fuel capacity. Actually, more fuel gain. We get more factories to use, and it's we get 20% buff or 20% less of a debuff to building factories, which is I think much better than the other idea down there so 11 factories it's going to take some time for us to really build ourselves up this entire game we are going to be quite literally building ourselves up the entire game even as we're winning oh god no an agricultural crisis i forgot to mark uh how much time has gone on um i can probably do enough for at least 15 more minutes since the belt Creek, ukraine has traditionally relied upon its valuable grain trade with the german empire in order to maintain its economic security unfortunately the current socio-economic issues affecting afflicting the reich have meant that it is now far more interested in protecting its own farmers than taking the politically unpopular move of subsidizing Ukrainian agriculture. Oh, there goes AOG. Uh, this could be very dangerous for us as, without support from the German market, our ruling class of Agrarian landowners could find it difficult to maintain their dominance in the countryside. We're still the breadbasket of Europe, right? Oh, crap! Oh, sorry, that was a little bit too loud, but 20% stability and I lose two... No, 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 no. Germany, you gotta take that back. Oh, I do not remember this happening last time I played Kaiserreich. Um, the Chinese, they're, they're feeling a little angry right now, guys. Maklik, Republic of Huang Zing, Jing. Still focus, still generic focus streets, that's okay. I say that, that they have a generic focus street for now. Ooh, it looks like they got more land right there. Just because I know that most likely I started playing Kaiserreich right now. That means there might be an update that is released by the time I'm finished with this campaign. Which means that I'm probably going to have to restart restart the campaign eventually. Which will be a pain in the butt, but that's okay. So I'm, that's what I'm kind of assuming if I'm playing Kaiserreich. That there's going to maybe be an update. Maybe. I don't know. I, I could be very well wrong. I think the last time I played Kaiserreich, there was an update in the middle of the game. I think when, when I was playing as like Jack Reed... As the combined syndicates of America, there was an update that made me restart the Civil War. But, oh. So, hey, you never know. Maybe there will be an update soon. Maybe that will be great. Maybe it won't be great. But I need more guns. And more tanks. Uh, yeah. So, the Ukrainian focus tree, it's not bad. I wish it was a little bit more in-depth to a degree. But I guess you could say that about any focus tree. Yeah, we'll definitely do Global Ukraine. And we'll have to do our future eventually. But... Faith and nation. Before the agricultural crisis, pro-Russian movements were rather weak and disunited, ensuring they didn't pose much of a threat to our government. This crisis, though, has led to a shocking rise in popular support for these organizations and an increase in their willingness to cooperate. Yesterday, a famous Russian writer from Kiev, Mikhail Bulgakov, proclaimed the unification of the three largest movements into a singular organization, known as Faith and Nation, Vera I Narod, or just Vin. Supported by the Ukrainian church, itself heavily influenced by the Moscow Patriarch at the population of southern and eastern Ukraine and many high-ranking officers, this movement could provoke serious instability in some parts of our country. Well, how about no? Okay, maneuvers in the Carpathians. Arthur Horner elected chairman of the Tuck. That's interesting. And also, I remember at the beginning of this. Um, yeah, I made sure that maybe the Austrian Empire reunites itself. I really want to see that because... When you leave it up to the AI for them to figure out how to actually do that, they almost always choose uh, status quo, at least for right now. They almost always choose status quo when they go social conservatives. And I want to see a stronger U well, I want to see a stronger Ukraine, but I also want to see a stronger Austrian Empire. And maybe we'll have to duke it out with them in the later on because they were involved in our politics. And there can be no meddling or collusion in Ukrainian politics. 
Also, I'm joined here by my cat named Binky. He's sleeping close to my keyboard in the sunlight, sunbathing, as he's getting some of his beauty rest. Also, normally I have coffee during this time when I'm playing this game, but I currently do not have any. So, oh well. Uh, let's see. We have political power now, 1.37 a day. I could do spend a hundred of that to get more stability. Now, it wouldn't really hurt us to do that, but is more stability worth it over... Oh crap, I can already do this. Partial mobilization. Stability. Factories. I'm going to go with partial mobilization, and then once, once we're done with this, then I will go and get police crackdowns for some more weekly stability, because we will definitely need it. Construction 1, that's fine. Um, what do we need? How are our guns? They're okay. We need to start doing some land doctrine. Of course, I'll choose superior firepower. So, even though we played a lot of old world blues, I wasn't exactly ready to play this too much yet. Just because I don't remember how to... Well, I do remember how to play this game. It's just... Going from old world blues back to a game like Kaiserreich or even Hoi 4 Vanilla. It's a little bit more... Different. There's more stuff involved. Anyways, I've, Ivan Chernyakovsky returns from Africa. A young and talented officer, he has returned to Ukraine. He was a member of the Voluntary Ukrainian Division, which supported our German allies in regional conflicts in the Middle African Bush. His books on the banks of the Congo and Safari previously made him the most popular Ukrainian soldier and writer in the entire country. Chernyakovsky has been promoted to the rank of Colonel and will soon become the commander of the 1st Cossack Division which ensures this popular figurehead will command an elite branch of the Ukrainian army. 2% more stability, I will take any sort of 2% thing. 2% milk? Sure. 2% stability? Sure. 2% more on uh, car insurance? Sure. I guess why not? I don't know why. Car insurance is expensive, guys. Very expensive. Anyways, um, I just gotta make sure I keep a relative eye on time. So. We already have gone to partial mobilization. Germany, do not be alarmed. We're only partially mobilizing to contain the Russian threat. International avant-garde. Okay, cool. Um, I'm just thinking right now with my political power, I might... Ch yeah, I am definitely still want to do that stability thing. That's still the best bet for us to do next. But we currently use 12 of our civilian factories. Dmitry Dontsov, deported from Galicia, Lodomeria. He was a renowned ideologue of Ukrainian nationalism, but he has been deported from Galicia, where he has been, had urged the local Ukrainian minority to resist Austro-Hungarian administration. He now claims that our silence on the crisis has exposed the weakness of our government, and that's why Ukraine should be ruled by real Ukrainian patriots. His slogan, Ukraine for the Ukrainians, is attractive to many citizens, especially in western Ukraine, and graffiti has been spotted in a number of towns. This could be dangerous for the cabinet, since we've already lost considerable support in the east. So. That was in Galicia, Ludomeria, which means for me that I definitely want to annex at least Stanislaw and Lemberg, which I think, I don't know exactly, but I per think that in Ukrainian, Lemberg has other different names, I think including maybe Lviv, Lviv perhaps? So basically, I know that this is kind of made up of maybe a few handful of Austrians, maybe a, maybe a handful of Hungarians, but mostly Ukrainians, Ukrainians, and Poles. So if I can, if I have to destroy Austrian, the Austrian Empire, I will and annex this part into the Ukrainian General Assembly. Maybe even give Krakow to Poland, if we potentially take Poland out. Now, it really depends on what they do. They might join the Reichspact. If Poland joins the Reichspact, then this won't work. But my plan was to take out the Poles. Oh, crap. Rifles and Carbines. Produced by Alexander Dovsenko. The film Rifles and Carbines, or Carbines, is devoted to the story of the struggle between the Russian white forces under General Drozdovsky, Dro Drozdovsky and the forces of the Ukrainian Kingdom in 1918 in the south during the Issei Don March. The film, which was conceived to be an answer to the Bolkakov's White Guard, doesn't try to point out possible methods of reconciliation, but raises, by implication, the potential for separatists and spies of foreign powers to still be hiding among the Ukrainian population and both willing and able to try to exploit its weakness. Death to the enemies of the Ukraine. Amen. Oh, baby. Let's see. We're doing much better on guns. I'm going to keep the thing on for artillery. Motorized is still fine. I could... Oh, wait. I forgot something. I forgot to do this. Well, this really doesn't matter if we didn't even do this at all. So, 
give me three divisions for now. That's pretty much probably all we can support. Even if I did this earlier, I still wouldn't have enough manpower. I mean, yeah, we need infantry equipment, but I don't have the manpower for it, so it doesn't even matter. So, cool. Yeah, not much is going on, but it's so... Oh, crap. Khrushchev, please. Khrushchev, come on. Nikita Khrushchev, a prominent Ukrainian social democrat, has opened the third congress of the Ukrainian syndicalist party. He demands that the government take extreme measures to defend the workers and peasants from poverty brought on by the global crash. To further this agenda, he has proposed a new program of major social and economic reforms aimed at helping Ukraine overcome the crisis. This controversial, controversial figure is going to present his plan in the Rada soon. Well, in the end, we might just have to get rid of him. I really want to see. I really want to know what they're up to, the Russians are. And I... To a lesser degree, I need to know what's going on in Trans Amur. Will they become the Far Eastern Republic under Kolchak? I kind of hope so. I kind of really, really hope so. Okay, they have a new king in Poland. That's the new Polish king. Karl Olbrach. All right, then. Lessons of Amur. Wait, does that mean they went with an Austrian king? Of, oh, I'm, oh no, I'm right. They went with the Von Habsburg. Oh no. Return of Galicia. Oh. Please don't let them go join the Austrian circle anytime soon. Because I wanted to take them out. But if I can't, then so be it. Because Poland could be a very easy potential puppet for us to take out. So, yeah. Ooh, we got some political power. Yeah, let's go ahead and get some more stability. That's really important to get early on. Oh man. I don't, please don't. Don't join them. Don't join them. Because then that would make... We would have. A, we will have a regular, pretty strong Austrian Empire with Poland as a puppet. That means I have no puppet of myself. Ooh, the agricultural crisis has almost shattered the Ukrainian economy and the stability of many of the nation's most important institutions. The king's grip on the country is weakening by the hour. Peasants loyal to the hetman want major land reform. Pro-Russian malcontents and the re Ukrainian nationalists demean, demand... Radical measures and the syndicalists are mobilizing workers all over the country. Various political movements struggle for power and are teetering nation. And soon we have to choose who will lead the Ukraine into the future. Stagger on as she always will. We've only made it a few months. And we can finally choose our first focus. Despite us being playing this for almost six months and almost half an hour. Cool. Coalition with the nationalists. That is the one I'm going to choose. We are going to make sure the Ukraine is a national great power that everyone will recognize our strength. Realizing the scale of the syndicalist threat, Hetman Skoropatsky decided to strike a bargain with the pro-Russian Vin and the nationalist Own. Uh, both parties will get freedom of action in regions where they are especially popular, but in return they will support Skoropatsky's regime and the king in the Rada through a confidence and supply agreement. Yes, my friends, we are going nationalist here. And you know what? We're going to not just be nationalists, we're going to be super nationalists. We are going, not going to go with church and nation, even though that would probably better be better for us in the short term because it gives us way more stability but we will requisition polish farms and all sorts of good stuff we're going to become very very nationalist maybe not national populist maybe actually we might end up national populist but anyways we'll become very very nationalist i can't remember if it's national populist that well that will become or not oh well austrian uh, austria what are you doing everyone can like oh did you not give Oh, it's not th 1937 yet. We have to ha we have to hit 1937 first before them to before the Hungarians get all pissed off and whatnot. Oh, Germany, where are you going? Are you? I know you can just march through my lands. I have no real qualms about that right now. But uh, okay, okay, you're going all the way through the Ottoman Empire. Are you going down to Iran? Iran? I did get ca criticized earlier earlier this year for one of my videos about Iran when I invaded them playing as Trotsky. I think you pronounce it Iran, not Iran, but Iran. I put okay, are you walking in the water now? Oh, oh you have a boat. Okay, you're not you're not Moses. You're just in a boat now. Cool. So it's Iran or Persia in this timeline for right now. Uh, you know, whenever I look at Greece, especially in Kaiserreich, this always looks a little sad. Just Thessalonica. It's always just separated off from Bulgaria, at least for now. It, it's like a little what if? Like, can I please be joined with you? Like, can we please give Western Salonika, Salonika, Salonika to Greece? But something tells me that Bulgarians, they're not going to last long. They're not really going to last long at all. Let's see, we got police crackdown, and we get more stability weekly anyway, so that's good. The Indo-Chinese revolt, oh, that sucks. The Indo-Chinese revolt succeeded. I don't like seeing that sometimes. 
Uh, Tibet is having a weird time with Maklik. And there's really not much else that's really going on now. I'm not really used, reused really to these national focuses, or these focuses, or foci. That takes 70 days. At least Old World Blues had it for like 30, maybe 35 days. But 70 days, now it just feels almost too long to have a focus that lasts over two months. Oh, jeez. But we'll end the episode after we do Coalition with the Nationalists. So in the meantime, it's still 1936. And I could probably use a better reinforce rate, plus 5%. After I do dispersed industry, very nice. Um, really, we won't have a lot of time to focus on the air force, not even in the navy that much either. Uh, support companies will be very important, but they're not extremely necessary right now. I'm not even going to focus on tanks. There's no point to right now. Uh, we could focus on this, the MG08/15, and like their mine inverter, min inverter. So we'll probably do that. If anything, I'm probably going to focus on heavy or slower dreadnoughts, battleships, as well as light cruisers for my navy. And normally when I play base game Hoi 4, I like to use heavy fighters just because of the range is just so good. And I don't have to replace them later. But I think I'm going to go with just normal fighters in this campaign. I think that's just probably be for the best. I'm not going to... Well, we've got enough fuel for now. We might as well train them. I might lose a few planes, but I guess that's worth it. All right. Coalition with the Nationalists. We can't really do very much else. We can do the new Ukrainian army. That's not bad. We could get a little bit of army XP, but I'm going to need a lot of army XP in the long run. Um, I mean, this is nice and all, but really we need to focus on ourselves first. We'll get superior firepower done over time, but let's do initial administrative reforms. Members of Faith Nation and Organization of the Ukrainian Nationals have begun to replace Hetman period officials in the regions and mass, somewhat upsetting the balance of the Rada. Surprisingly, this has had a positive effect on our economy because... Eager new local governments are keen to solve the problems afflicting their own towns. The first steps of reform are underway. So, with this we'll get a few more consumer goods, maybe one more factory, a higher production efficiency cap, and we get plus six stability. But that's all the time for we have today. We have made it from January all the way to October 17th, 1936, in the first episode of our Ukrainian campaign, where we will make sure we become a power. Maybe not a superpower, but at least a power. So with that in mind, guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're new. Tell me how I pronounce my Ukrainian words wrong. Check out the Discord link below and tell me hello on Discord, on my server. And I will see you all tomorrow. And I hope you all have a great, tremendous day.